So Abu Abdul Rahman from the UK had a number of questions. Question number one regarding the concept of imitating the disbelievers. Hadith of Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him and with his father, where he, the Prophet والسلام, said in a long hadith, at the conclusion of this hadith, he said, وَمَنْ تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ Whoever imitates a people, he's considered one of them. So the scholars looked into this phrase and said, how would a person imitate a people? So by wearing a watch and using a PDA, by using cameras, high def cameras, and being in a studio which came to us from the disbelievers, from a different people. Am I imitating the disbelievers when I'm riding my car? Scholars said no. So we asked them, how, what, what is the criteria that we can judge? They said, if it is related to their religion, if it is related to their customs, if it is related to their own dress code that no one shares them in it among the Muslims. So this is considered to be part of imitating the disbelievers. And unfortunately, the Muslims are being e slowly but surely being diluted. Not them physically, but their beliefs, their convictions, their traditions, and their religion. So it is sort of being put in a melting pot. You want to come to our country? You have to be like us. Talk like us. Mix like us. Fornicate like us. Drink champagne in your weddings like us. Whether it's okay with your religion or not, this is not our problem. You have to be in the melting pot. So they are trying slowly to strip us out of our religion. Now you see non-Muslims wearing T-shirts, wearing crosses, having tattoos, coming to Muslim lands, and you see this. And the youth are impressed. They want to imitate. I was once personally with someone who's a Muslim. And a man fell on the ground, fainted, had a seizure. What did this young man do? He said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <laughs> what is this? The guy did it unintentionally, but this is what he sees. And he thinks that, oh, this is a sign of praying to Allah Azza wa Jal, though he's a Muslim. So we have to draw the line. Things that are related to their religion, this is totally prohibited. To pray like them, um, for example, if you go to a masjid, you would find people reciting the Quran doing this or doing this while reciting the Quran. What are you doing? He said, I'm reciting the Quran. This is the way that the Jews pray. You're not allowed to do this. Quran was revealed so that you would, it would fill you up with tranquility, calmness, and submissiveness. You read it without movement, without such crazy movement. People that imitate the disbelievers in having a Christmas, the birth of Jesus. So they have their own Christmas, the Mawlid of the Prophet ﷺ, Touche. This is wrong, imitating the disbelievers and so on. Now, imitating them in their customs. So you find people in restaurants, educated PhD holders or CEOs of companies, and they're holding the fork with the left hand and the knife with the right, and they're eating their steak with their left. And this is totally against Islam. What are you doing, bro? He says, well, people will laugh at me. This is the etiquette of eating. Subhanallah. Where is the Islamic etiquette? He said, it's not befitting in a five-star uh, uh, hotel. And by the way, utensils are made of gold or silver. So, mashallah, so sin over sin. Total darkness. Imitating the disbelievers in their dress code. So, nowadays... If I travel, I put on my pair of jeans and a t-shirt. Sheikh, you're imitating the kuffars. No. For 80% uh, uh, of the Muslim world are wearing this, so it's okay. 
So wedding Jesus is okay? Yeah, it's okay. But 150 years ago, when no Muslim used to wear jeans, and anyone who wears jeans is, would be, I, if they had jeans at the time, I don't know, I don't think so. Levi's was not invented then, but in, uh, never, nevertheless. If a Muslim wore jeans at that time, he would have been sinful. Why? Because he's imitating the disbelievers. Now, because wearing a suit, wearing trousers, wearing a jacket is done by Muslims and non-Muslims alike, riding a car, wearing a watch, using a fountain pen, is being used by Muslims and non-Muslims. It has nothing to relate to their own religion or to their customs or tradition or dress code. Then this becomes permissible, inshallah. So, a wedding dress of a woman comes under this category because 99% of Muslim women wear these white uh, gowns or the white uh, wedding dress. But we have to be careful with the, the, the imitation that goes against our religion. So if it exposes her cleavage or her back totally, this is nudity, which is not permissible in Islam. It's haram. If she wears something like two, three meters uh, with a tail that children can't, this is totally prohibited because this is haram. A normal wedding dress with a nice uh, uh, looking and decoration uh, with uh, the bride, uh, what do you call it? Headdress or whatever they call it. There's no problem in that. What about wearing the flowers, Sheikh? Carrying the flowers. Well, inshallah, it's okay. What about giving them their back and throwing it so that any woman would catch it, would probably as a good omen be next to be wedded. Aha, uh -huh. this is imitating the kuffar. This is totally prohibited. And likewise, talking about the graduation um, dress and the hat they wear, I personally would not ever do this. I would not wear it because I'm still hesitant that this is uh, uh, becoming the norm. It's still in midway. Not all universities pra practice this, uh, especially in, in the Muslim world, but some are picking up this imitation. I don't know about the origin of it, but I would not do it myself, and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.